It was a tragic and potentially avoidable dive accident. I saw an article about a dive instructor accused in a student's death, and I read the article and was blown away. Not so much about the legal aspects and the trials of this case. That's another video. What got me and what I want to highlight in this video and what I think is essential for all divers and non-divers to know about is what was ultimately determined to be the cause of this diver's death and what can be learned from the student diver's death and the symptoms of the condition that caused it. And that death was attributed to immersion pulmonary edema, IPO. And it's also known as scuba divers pulmonary edema and swimming induced pulmonary edema. And what is so tragic is that this death may have been avoided if people had known about this condition. Now I'm not faulting, accusing, whatever you want to call it, the people involved in this, far from it. I just want to use this incident to get the information out there that all divers should know. The information could potentially save yours or another diver's life. And actually the article I read, which was on divemagazine.com, and I'll link to it in the description below, stated that this condition is, quote, now thought to be among the most common, if not the most common causes of death in scuba diving, unquote. Now, in all honesty, I had no idea about this condition. And I don't think I'm alone out there because when I sent this article out to my email list, I got quite a few responses saying that they had no idea about this condition either. And if you know about it, that is great. Just spread the word. But if this video educates just one person about this condition, it's well worth it. Now, in this particular incident, the student diver had to swim 100 meter out to a descent line and when he got there, he was out of breath. They waited until he recovered and then they went down and the student did some of his required skills. He was doing a deep diver course for his advanced open water program. And during an air check, the student diver had less air that his instructor thought that the student should have. So the instructor called the dive and they begin their ascent. On the way up, the student indicated he was out of air and a check by the instructor showed that this wasn't a case that he had 20 bar, a little less than 300 pounds left in his tank. The student was then put on the dive master's air supply and the student again indicated he was out of air. But the air supply was checked and that wasn't the case. I won't go into all the details of what happened. I'll leave that link in the description below. But the long and short of it, while at that safety stop, the student's eyes glazed over and the regulator fell out of his mouth. So they immediately brought him to the surface, gave him medical attention, got help there, brought him to the hospital. And unfortunately, five hours later, the student diver was pronounced dead. Now I want to read a statement from this article. And then after that, I will go over the common signs and symptoms of IPO. So if we ever encounter it, we have an idea of what it may be. Now the statement was that a diver signaling out of air when they still have a working supply is a recognized sign of immersion pulmonary edema, IPO, a condition where the lungs spontaneously fill with fluid upon immersion in cold water, which, if untreated, eventually causes the diver to asphyxiate. It is most likely to occur in people with hypertension, high blood pressure. Women are eight times more likely to suffer IPO than men. And unless an autopsy pays particular attention to a very specific part of the lung's tissues, it is usually mistaken for drowning. Now, I just want to note that I also read that this has occurred in warm water, so it's just not limited to diving in cold water. So what we can learn from this tragic death is to be aware of the signs and symptoms of IPO. So some of the common signs and symptoms are number one, breathing difficulties included rapid, heavy, or uneven breathing or coughing uncontrollably when not exercising strenuously. Two, confusion, swimming in the wrong or random direction. Three, inability to carry out normal functions while appearing to have to concentrate on breathing. Four, belief that a regulator is not working properly or indicating one is out of gas when they have an adequate supply. Five, rejecting an alternate air source. Six, indication of difficulty of breathing at the surface. And seven, uncontrollable coughing at the surface accompanied by frothy expulsions, which may contain blood. And of course, the tragic part is it could have been prevented possibly if everyone involved knew the symptoms of IPO. And also an article on Dan's website, Divers Alert Network, said that IPO often resolves once a diver has exited the water, which obviously is great news for anyone involved that may have this condition. So especially since this may be reversed, I want to do all I can to spread the word about this condition among divers and non-divers in the event that it may help someone in the future. And if you know someone that may benefit from this knowledge, please share this video with them or the article that I will leave a link to in the description or talk about IPO with them so we can all spread the word and we all want to be more informed and safer divers and may we never have to read about another preventable diver's death thanks for watching and please talk it over with your dive buddies in the meantime safe diving